Welcome, my friends, back to the fog. In this realm of death and fear, one would think that there's no such thing as justice. However, this isn't true. Even in a realm like this, there is justice. Cold, unfeeling, and unrestrained. Dark justice at its most primal. From the haunted realm of Silent Hill comes a judge and executioner, the Pyramid Head. An entity not of this world, born from the mind of a guilty conscience, this beast was formed for one purpose, to punish the wicked, to strike down that which is evil, and to reveal the wicked heart of those who dare to cross into its territory. When James Sunderland killed his wife Mary to spare her the pain of her illness, he was filled with guilt and self-loathing to the point he began to repress the memory of his crime. When he came to Silent Hill, the pyramid heads were formed from his unsubconscious to punish him justly and force him to recognize his sins. In the end, when James finally recognized those sins and forgave himself, the pyramid heads lost their reason to punish him and faded. All but one. There was a new force that called to it. The entity had a need for a judge and executioner. Now the Pyramid Head stalks the fog of the Entity's realm, and none dare approach him. Ironically, even the other monsters of the fog flee at his coming. Perhaps it is because they know what he is, what he embodies. The Pyramid Head is the culmination of their sins and the final judgment for their evil. They are not repentant, but they are culpable, and they know it. A force that even the beasts of the Entity's realm flee from? What else could it be but the Apostle of Dark Justice? I will stress again that I have never played Silent Hill, so I had to do some research on the Pyramid Head and his role. And after doing my research and reading up on him, I can only scratch my head in confusion. His presence here doesn't make a lot of sense. From what I gathered, I learned that the Pyramid Head was a creation of the subconscious of James Sunderland in Silent Hill 2 to be his punishers. Born from his unconscious not mind and desire to punish himself for his sins and his murder of his own wife. And that's why the Pyramid Head kills Maria twice in front of him, because Maria represents his wife and she's killed by the Pyramid Heads. And it's all meant to remind him of his murder and to remind him of why he deserves to be punished. Basically, it's kind of like when in your mind you keep on thinking about the same thing you did wrong over and over again. You're always reliving and rehashing that sin you committed, and that's what the Pyramid Heads do. They're basically punishing him. You know, and apparently, however, fans love the design so much of Pyramid Head, even after the game, that they demanded the producers make more Pyramid Heads in other game sequels, including Homecoming. And apparently some of the producers, like Ito, who originally designed him, weren't too happy about it, because they kind of view Pyramid Head as an entity strictly tied to James Sunderland. But despite that, he still did design other variations of the character, and Tom Hullett even said it was weird because, you know, people kept saying, we want to see Pyramid Head in this game, and Tom would say, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense for him to appear in this game. No, 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 he's just in it, okay? And so he kind of turned into this whole thing, and that's kind of how I feel about this. It's kind of like, what is Pyramid Head doing in si in, from Silent Hill in the DVD world? No, 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 he's just there, okay? I mean, if all that's true, if he is in the DVD world, okay, how can a being born of unconscious desire be brought into a realm not tied to James Sunderland? Why would it hunt down those aside from James Sunderland? And even if we assume the Pyramid Head would hunt any sinner it wanted to, how can you turn a creation of the mind into a physical entity for others? I mean, I suppose the entity would be capable of such things, but I feel it takes away something special from the creature itself. I mean, think about this for a second. If we argued that what the entity did was he took the essence of Silent Hill and put it in his realm, so that means that all of the characters who now appear, all the survivors, the Pyramid Head is basically their subconscious self-loathing and sin well one what if the survivor doesn't have any self-loathing what if they aren't punishing themselves for something and two even if they were why would it take the form of the pyramid head why wouldn't it take some other form i, I don't know plus i find it funny that the survivor to come out with pyramid head was cheryl mason the protagonist of silent hill 3 in which pyramid head was never even mentioned so the survivor and killer though from the same franchise have nothing to do each other with each other narratively <laughs> this feels like a comedy of errors if ever i've seen it but with my criticisms aside about how this works narratively, I love Pyramid Head. His design is macabre and frightening, which you wouldn't even expect from such a goofy design. I mean, you're taking a strong man in a butcher's apron, dragging a massive cleaver knife around with a huge steel pyramid helmet covering his weird looking head. All you can think is, 
That's just stupid. But his presence is most definitely uncomfortable. He's frightening, but simplistic, which I really like. How do you come up with that? Like, how do you take such a frightening concept from such a silly design? I can't really say the lore for him makes a lot of sense, but it's one of those moments where I feel like it's something unexplainable. He has no reason to be a DVD outside of to just be a judge and destroyer, and for the entity, that's all that's really needed, isn't it? So I'll let this one go, because honestly, if you're taking a subconscious being, a creation of the mind, there's not a lot of lore you can add to it. All I can really say is, what's he doing here? You know, that's all I can ask, but in terms of that alone, I guess that's the only uh, real criticism I can offer. Now, of course, no one really cares about the lore when it comes to these characters, they care about the power. So what's his power? The Executioner's power is Rites of Judgment. This power manifests in two ways. First, holding down the power button, which will plunge the sword into the ground, allows you to start creating a trail of torment. Start walking, okay? While walking, you drag your knife through the ground, leaving behind that long trail with barbed wire coming out of it called the Trail of Torment. If a survivor runs or walks through this trail, they will be afflicted with torment and give off killer's instinct briefly. If a survivor inflicted with torment is put in the dying state, the pyramid head can, instead of hooking them, send them to a cage of atonement. This will teleport the survivor to a random location on the map inside of a spiked cage which behaves just like a hook. The pyramid head can't see where the survivor's cage ended up, but the survivors can see the aura and go to rescue them. Torment is removed from a survivor if they are rescued from the cage or if they rescue someone else. If a survivor is on death hook and is inflicted with torment, the pyramid head can put them in the dying state and then perform final judgment, which will instantly mori the survivor on the ground without the need to pick them up. Survivors can cross a trail of torment by crouching to avoid being seen and to avoid being given torment, but otherwise if they're in a chase, they'll have to run over it and that's no good for them. But that's not all. The Executioner can also perform Punishment of the Damned. While using Rites of Judgment and making a Trail of Torment, at any time you can hit the attack button and launch a wave of punishment called an attack trail directly in front of you that ignores barriers and obstacles like walls, pallets, and vault locations to strike a survivor directly in front of you a certain distance away. Overall, I really like the Executioner's powers. For one thing, the Trail of Torment can be very useful in controlling vault looping locations and punishing a survivor by vaulting the same spot over and over again, and the use of a Cage of Atonement means that even if a survivor tries to flashlight save, they can't interrupt the action of sending a survivor to the cage. The Punishment of the Damned also helps for survivors who constantly hide behind barriers or use pallets to create obstacles. Overall, I think Pyramid Head is rather strong as a killer with some good application to their power. Now, their perks are actually pretty good. I like the Pyramid Head's perks. The Pyramid Head's perks are Deathbound, Forced Penance, and Trail of Torment. Deathbound is a punishing perk that punishes survivors trying to heal one another. If a survivor performs a healing action within 32 meters of you and they heal another survivor for the equivalent of one health state, this perk kicks in. The survivor will scream, giving away their location, and they will be afflicted by the oblivious status effect for 60 seconds when they are further away than 8 meters from the healed survivor. This perk is very useful for punishing altruism and for allowing the pyramid head to come in on specific survivors. Very useful, I would say. Now, Forced Penance also punishes altruism. It's a very helpful perk when dealing with players who try to body block. When a survivor takes a protection hit for another one, that means that they run in front of you and take a hit for someone else, that survivor suffers the broken status effect for 80 seconds. I find this incredibly useful. Again, it punishes altruism, and it ensures that the most bold players think twice in future about getting in your way. It may not seem great at first, but I found it very nice to have on hand when dealing with troll survivors. And then Trail of Torment is probably his most popular perk. When you damage a generator, that generator will show its aura to all survivors in yellow and to yourself, but in exchange, you will gain the undetectable status effect until the generator stops regressing. 
In other words, it's bait. You become undetectable and don't give off a terror radius until the survivors run to the generator you've marked for them to fix. Once they start fixing it, you become detectable. That's true, but you also know exactly where the survivors are. So it's a good trade, very useful. Overall, like I said, I like the Pyramid Head. His design may be a little goofy and his presence in the DVD world may be a little suspect, but hey, you know what? I'm willing to let it slide for one reason. Honestly, Silent Hill is kind of a weird pipe dream anyway. The whole concept of Silent Hill, from what I've read, is essentially it is just this alternate dimension that brings out subconscious ideas and thoughts into reality. And when you bring something like that into the world, it's kind of hard to see it cross over with anything. I think that Cheryl Mason's lore was really, really on point, and I love seeing her in the DVD world because it asks so many questions about her relationship to the entity, and whether the entity wanted to have her in his world specifically because of this relationship, or if he actually resents her for some reason. Maybe she's the key to getting out. I don't know. It'd be interesting to explore. And then you have the Pyramid Head, whose very presence confounds me because he shouldn't exist here. He should only exist in the mind of James Sunderland brought to life by the Silent Hill world. How did the entity get him? There are questions there. There are real questions there. Some of them kind of fun to contemplate. But overall, in terms of playability, I think they're pretty cool. Cheryl is a lot of fun to play. Pyramid Head is one of my favorite killers to play. Overall, pretty solid chapter of DVD. But we're done with that chapter of Silent Hill and we're moving on to the next chapter in which we talk about a killer who... Um, a lot of people have some issues with, and I have some issues with him as well, but we'll get to the blight when we get to him. But first, we got a survivor to talk about, Felix Richter. And I'd give him a better introduction, but uh, I've actually never played him. I got some work to do. Anyway, guys, I will see you next time in the fog. Take care.